About three and a half years ago, I watched this uh, science fiction film called Her, which uh, features Samantha, a super intelligent form of AI, kind of like Siri, but just more intelligent, uh, that cannot take physical form. And because Samantha lives in an earpiece and cannot take physical form, she decides to write a piece of music that will capture a moment of her life just like a photograph would. And as a musician, an engineer, and someone who was raised in a family of artists, I felt that this idea of musical photographs was really captivating and powerful. And that's how I decided to create an AI music composer. So my father is a film and music producer, my mother is a singer, I'm a self-taught pianist, and I studied computer science uh, in, in London at university. Uh, and my, my first real interest in uh, science and technology took form at about age 11, when I wrote my first computer program, written in C. And, uh, and then, when I was 15, I developed a very high interest for space uh, and space exploration, and I co-directed with my father at this age a um, uh, four-film documentary series called Why Night to the Cosmos. And it's really this healthy mix of nerdiness on the one hand and artmanship on the other that collided uh, and, and that led me to create uh, Ava. Ava is an artificial intelligence that has learned the art of music composition by reading over 30,000 scores of history's greatest composers. So the likes of Mozart, Bach, Beethoven. And I'd like to show you what one score looks like to the algorithm in a matrix-like representation. So Actually, um, these are all the, the white patches that you see up there on the screen. Those are like uh, scores of music. And this is what 30,000 scores in this representation that Ava understands look like in a single frame. Using deep neural network, Ava looks for patterns in this music and in, this, in those scores. Uh, and in, in music, there's actually a lot of patterns. There's patterns in the melodies, in the harmonies, in the rhythm, in the structure. And By feeding Ava a couple of bars of existing music, so the white notes up there, uh, she learns to predict what notes should come next in those tracks. So when Ava gets the predictions right, it's the green notes up there, it's good. It means the model is learning the patterns in music. When Ava gets the predictions wrong, the red notes up there, uh, it means that the model still needs to learn about music. And in a way, this process is kind of similar as to how I, I learned the piano uh, and how people learn music. It's usually a trial and error process during which we don't always play the right notes or we may make mistakes, but we can cor correct ourselves, either with our musical ear or our musical knowledge. And the difference, obviously, between the process of an AI and the process of a human is that for human, it's a process that takes years and years and decades of learning and experience, and for an AI, it's a process that's condensed down to a couple of hours. So this is how we create good music with artificial intelligence. But actually, music is a very subjective art, and uh, creating good music is not enough. Because some people may prefer um, you know, Beethoven's music, other people may prefer the Beatles' music. It's all down to taste. So the way that we uh, you know, create music that's right for, for, the, for the right person um, is a three-step process. So the first step is that for each and every score in our database, we actually attach 30 different category labels. So things like the mood of the score, or the density of notes uh, present in the score, or the epoch during which the piece was written, or the composer name. Then the second step is to actually um, you know, uh, have Ava calculate the stylistic similarity between different scores. So behind me, you can see on the screen the sort of uh, 3D representation of what that process looks like. And the, the dots represent scores, and the closer two dots are, the more stylistically similar they are. And the further apart they are, the less similar they are in style. And the third part of the process is to actually pick an influence. So let's say we like the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Uh, we pick this influence, we give it to Ava, and then Ava will create a new piece of music that will be close in this 3D space Uh, to the original influence that's given to us. And so this is what allows us to create uh, you know, music that works for very spe uh, specific requirements, like the ones that we had recently for a project where Ava was commissioned to create a piece of music that would be reminiscent of a soundtrack film, uh, of a great science fiction film. And so uh, Ava created a, a composition for that project, 
And we brought that score to 78 musicians from Hollywood uh, in the 20th Century Fox Studios. Best day of my life. We're great conductor, great musicians, and I would like to show you uh, what they recorded on that day. What did you think? Thank you. And so, you know, I think AI can now create, as, as was shown before, uh, can create very beautiful music. But the best part of it is not that it can create beautiful music, it's that it's human spirit and it's human creativity that can actually bring it to life. And this is extremely important for me, but not just for me, but also for my team, because we're all musicians and engineers, and we always have this duality that's omnipresent in, in the work that we, do, that we do. And, you know, it's not the first time in history that technology has been used to augment human creativity. As a matter of fact, um, in, the, in the 19th century, live music was almost always used in silent films. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, back then you had to cram a full symphony into a small theater. Uh, and imagine if today we had to do that for every single movie uh, out there that, that is released and for every single theater in the world that just isn't scalable. Uh, but instead, when music recording was invented, uh, it allowed filmmakers to have access to pre-recorded music that was tailored to each and every frame of their stories. And today we take for granted that the music is here to enhance the emotion that we feel uh, and that, that the director wants to communicate with us in the, in the story that they're trying to tell visually. So that was really an enhancer of creativity. So when I watched this movie, Her, that I talked about earlier, uh, three and a half years ago, I thought to myself that personalized music would be the next single biggest change in how we create and consume music. And if you look at interactive medias nowadays, like video games, for example, those have hundreds of hours of very interactive stories where you can make your own choices and the world around you will, will be shaped based on those choices. But the problem is that the music is only stuck in a loop. It's essentially just two hours long. And if you make quick math, it means that the same music loops 50 times over, which is not a very immersive experience. And what we're working on doing with Ava is to basically have uh, you know, personalized soundtracks generated so that games and interactive content can have hundreds of hours of personalized music that is based on what the player does in the game. But we don't just want to do that for games. Um, Beethoven is a composer who wrote a, a piece of personalized music, uh, supposedly for his beloved uh, Elise. So the piece is called Letter for Elise. And Imagine if we could bring back composers like Beethoven to life, and if he was sitting next to you and you know, writing a piece for your personality and your life story. And this is, you know, this is the, the, the vision at Eva that, that we want to that achieve. Um, imagine if someone like Martin Luther King had a, you know, an, a personalized AI composer. Maybe then we would remember I Had a Dream not only as a great speech, but also as a great piece of music, capturing and embodying King's ideals. This is what I would like to leave you uh, with today. Uh, you know, my vision for, for uh, personalized music where each and every one of you can have access to a personalized live soundtrack. Thank you very much. Thank you. Actually, uh, I have a little surprise for you. Um, and you know, this moment here together at the meetup uh, is kind of part of our life stories, our respective life stories. And so it felt very fitting to have Ava compose a personalized soundtrack for all of us. 
Um, so when I spoke to, uh, to Tarek uh, about you know, the, the, the soundtrack, what it should uh, convey, uh, he told me you know, he, he definitely emphasized a lot about the, the empathy that he wanted the music to, to convey. And he said that this meetup was, you know, was, was also about dreaming, about seeing in the future, uh, about communicating strong emotions. And so what we did is that we handpicked a couple of uh, you know, existing music in our database that we felt was uh, you know, um, embodying those ideals. And then we trained Ava on those influences, and it composed an original soundtrack, never heard before, so this is premiere. And uh, we've got a, a beautiful orchestra flying all the way from, uh, from Sofia to Paris to play this AI-generated personalized soundtrack. It doesn't get better than that, so please welcome the Sofia Session Orchestra.